Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with barbecued roast beef on a bun. That's right, I'm going to show you one of my favorite methods for barbecuing relatively inexpensive cuts of beef. And if you're wondering, how can it be barbecued and roast beef? Doesn't it have to be one or the other? Well, technically, yes, but don't worry about it. Since we're not barbecuing or roasting, we are actually grilling. Okay, so now that we've cleared that up, we can go ahead and get started by making a very simple dry rub, which will include some kosher salt, some white sugar, some freshly ground black pepper, and then last but not least, oh yeah, you guessed it, some cayenne pepper. And that's it, we'll take a spoon and give this a mix. And then once that's been sufficiently spooned, we will set that aside and we'll move on to our B-O-H-O-B, which stands for big old hunk of beef. And what I have here is a nice extra thick top round steak which is often sold under the name London Broil. And it's usually relatively inexpensive, unless of course you buy the Wagyu beef, because it was on sale, which explains the ridiculous amount of fatty marbling. But contrary to popular belief, all that marbling is not going to make this tender, but it does mean it's going to taste great. And what we'll do first here is take our dry rub, and we will apply half to each side, making sure we rub it and or pat it in very well. And by the way, the reason I'm calling this barbecued roast beef is because the technique's gonna work with any cut of beef we usually use for roast beef. Like this top round, or bottom round, or rump roast. Or if you want to go with something a little pricier and a little more tender, a nice thick piece of top sirloin would be a great choice. So remember, this technique works with a lot of cuts, so use whatever you want. I mean, you are after all the Norman Bates, of what goes on your grill's grates. And that's it, once all our rub has been applied all over, we'll go ahead and transfer this onto a rack on top of a sheet pan which is going to allow air to circulate underneath while this sits in the fridge. And if you don't have a rack, just make one by crinkling up some foil. And that's it, once our meat's been racked, we will pop that in the fridge for anywhere between 12 and 24 hours, during which time it's gonna what we call dry brine. And at some point while that's going on, we'll go ahead and mix up our wet rub, which is nothing more than a little of our favorite barbecue sauce, plus some apple cider vinegar. And we'll also toss in a spoon of Dijon mustard, or if you want yellow mustard. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of turmeric, not so much for flavor, but I think it helps tenderize the meat, although I'm not sure I can prove that. And then we'll finish up with a few cloves of crushed garlic. And that's it, we will give that a mix, at which point it is ready to use on our now hopefully dry brined beef, which after a day in the fridge should look like this. And yes, I did flip mine over halfway through. And basically what happened here the salt and the sugar drew moisture out of the meat, which then dissolved the salt and sugar, which was then reabsorbed by the meat, which not only seasons it beautifully, it also makes the meat more tender. But anyway, what we'll do at this point is transfer that into a dish, and we'll pour over half our wet rub, at which point we will proceed to poke it in with two forks. And I'm going to edit this for time's sake, but we really do want to poke each side for a good minute. Okay, we want to make lots and lots of holes, which is going to push some of that wet rub into the meat now, but it's also gonna allow for more of that wet rub to soak in while this sits. So we'll go ahead and apply half of that to each side, making sure we're poking it in real good. And by the way, I'm a poker, but if you don't feel like poking and you'd rather stab, all you need to do is change your grip on the forks like this and you are ready to stab away. Although if you use this method while you're doing it, you have to make that sound effect from the shower scene in the movie Psycho. Right, that's the rule, especially if people are watching you. But either way, once that's been poked and or stabbed, what we'll do is spoon any of the excess on the bottom over the top, at which point we'll wrap this and pop it in the fridge anywhere between 4 and 12 hours. Okay, so you can do this overnight, or you can just do it in the morning if you're grilling in the afternoon. Okay, so first we dry rubbed, and then we wet rubbed. And now after unwrapping, we're just going to rub some of that excess wet rub off the top. Okay, we don't need this to be dry when it goes on the grill, but we should rub, or rather scrape, some of that excess off the surface. And that's it, we are now ready to head to the grill to do what many of us Americans call barbecuing. Even though I guess that's not technically correct, but except for a few dozen pitmasters and a couple food writers, nobody cares. And what we're going to do here is barbecue this, or grill this if you prefer, for I'm going to guess about 7 to 10 minutes per side, or until it's cooked to your desired doneness, which for me is about medium rare. And feel free to just place yours down and leave it, but that is not how I operate. I like to play with my meat on a grill, and I like to move it around with reckless abandon. And after I give each side about five minutes, 
I'll just keep flipping it over every minute or so until I'm happy with how long it's cooked and how it looks. Speaking of which, make no mistake, thanks to the sugar in the dry rub and the barbecue sauce and vinegar in the wet rub, the surface of our meat is definitely going to blacken. But that's okay, and this time we're doing it on purpose. All right, when it comes to cooking, there's different kinds of blackened. All right, there's bad blackened, like burnt toast, which has an unpleasant flavor. And then there's good blackened, like the burnt sugar on a creme brulee, or the black grill marks on a steak. Or if you've ever seen one of those award-winning barbecue briskets, those are always completely black when they're done. But anyway, the point is, don't be scared. This is how it's supposed to look. And then what we'll do once our beef is black and beautiful is go ahead and pull that off the grill and transfer it to a foil-lined plate. Because what we want to do is quickly and very tightly wrap this up and allow it to sit at least for 15 minutes. And it's during that time that it really finishes cooking. And my game plan is usually to pull it off about 120 internal temp, which means by the time it's rested, it should be about 130 and a perfect medium rare. Or maybe just a hair under. And that's it. Once that's rested and cased in foil for at least 15 minutes, we will go ahead and unwrap it. And if everything goes according to plan, you should have a good amount of intensely flavorful accumulated juices, which we will definitely want to toss our sliced meat in before we put it on the bun. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. Since of course first we got to slice this up. And to do that we'll want to take a nice sharp knife and cut this meat at a little bit of an angle into nice thin slices. And as you cut in, you should be looking at some of the most beautiful, juiciest, somehow surprisingly tender meat you've ever seen. I mean, come on, look at that. Somewhere someone has recently become a vegetarian, and they are now looking at this, and they are very much questioning their decision. And besides being absolutely to die for delicious, I really do think you're going to be impressed with the texture. All right, as I mentioned already a few times, top round is not a very tender cut of beef, but using this method, it really does get transformed into something you would think is a more expensive cut of meat. And then as far as final production goes, we will go ahead and take a bun's worth of slices, and after tossing it in some of those accumulated juices, we will place that on our bread, which ideally is some kind of nondescript hamburger bun that we've spread with some mayo and garnished with a few pickles. And that's it, we can maybe add a drizzle of barbecue sauce to the top. And of course, we're definitely going to want to serve that next to our famous German tater top potato salad, which as luck would have it, we just posted a video for. And that's it, our barbecued roast beef on a bun is ready to enjoy. And at the end of some of these videos, I feel like I need to explain how good it tastes. But here, not so much. All right, that, my friends, is just a spectacular meat sandwich. And whether it's really barbecued beef or grilled beef or grilled barbecued roast beef or roast barbecued grilled beef, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that using this technique, we can use some of those tougher, less expensive cuts and produce something absolutely gorgeous. All right, literally the only regret I had here is I should have put twice as much beef on the bun. And generally while eating something like this at the end of a video, I won't even think about stopping to eat the side dish. But when it's German tater top potato salad, oh, I'll stop. I'll stop a few times. But anyway, no matter what you pair this with or what cut of beef you use, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.